going on everybody? This is Pierce. How's it going? Hope everybody had themselves a good Thanksgiving break. Got some time to relax and enjoy themselves. I know for sure I didn't. This is going to be my video for Renewable Energy and Sustainability Final Research Project. Hope you all enjoy it. Alright, here's a PowerPoint I've put together of the key information that I've learned for researching my renewable energy subject over the semester, which is floating solar PV. In class, we discussed four main types of PV harnessing technologies, which have been ground-mounted solar, rooftop solar, parabolic trough, and concentrated solar. These have been the main sources of solar harvesting over the past 20 years. But over the last five years, a new technology has hit the market and is gaining popularity rapidly. And this technology, you guessed it, is solar on water. Floating solar PV, or FPV for short, is the practice of putting solar arrays installed on bodies of water. The PV panels themselves are attached to floating pontoons, and the floating pontoons are then attached to the bottom of the water body, and sometimes the side, with anchors and mooring lines. They have the exact same electrical equipment in a traditional PV plant, such as inverters, combiner boxes, and grounding. And the inverters that are used in these systems can be either installed on their own floating barges or on shore. Here's a schematic representation of what an FPV system might look like. There are two main types of FPV solutions that have been used over the past five years. These are the traditional pure float system, which are the most widely used. They consist of a single module per float and can be mounted either flat or at an angle, and the other type being the metal truss system. This system has panels attached to metal racks, which sit on regular buoys. There's a greater distance maintained between the modules and the water, and this is useful to use this system on water bodies that are liable to freeze. The places you can install FPV are very vast. These include reservoirs, pump storage pools, agricultural irrigation, flood mines, sediment storage ponds, lakes and dams, and coastal inlets. The reason why you would choose an FPV system over ground mount are the facts that it takes advantage of unutilized space on top of water bodies. They are perfect for locations that have land shortages or unfavorable land conditions for installing ground mounted PV on. There's a higher power output associated with FPV thanks to the cooling from water and less soiling from dirt and dust. FPV is easier and quicker to install. You don't have to perform site preparations such as leveling and laying foundations. It's very easy to scale and the FPV systems actually benefit the water bodies they are installed on because they reduce evaporation and prevent algae growth on the surface. You can utilize existing distribution infrastructure if you locate an FPV system at or near a hydropower plant. The countries that have historically and are currently investing heavily in FPV include countries in Southeast and Eastern Asia, including Taiwan, India, South Korea, Japan, China, countries in the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, these including specifically Singapore and the Philippines, and the Netherlands in Europe. Places that can benefit the most from FPV include island states such as Puerto Rico, Hawaii, and Cyprus, mountainous and hilly areas like Switzerland, Colorado, and Chile, areas with high population densities, including those that we previously discussed, LA and Bangladesh as well, and places that have a lot of hydropower, these being the Kyrgyz Republic or Kyrgyzstan, Brazil, and Oregon. The reasons why FPV hasn't seen large proliferation recently, up till now, is because the technology is still very young. It has existed only for 13 years and has been taken seriously for the past four. There's been little to no guidelines, standards, or precedents established for the installation of FPV systems. And there still remains much uncertainty from investors because of the limited track record. FPV is more susceptible to wind and storms and there is higher insulation costs associated with FPV at the moment. This comes from the mooring lines, anchoring, and the 
pontoons themselves. Nonetheless, there's still great potential that lies in FPV. NREL states that up to 7.6 terawatts of FPV can be generated around the world with only 20% reservoir coverage. The group identifies over 379,000 freshwater hydropower reservoirs globally. In the United States, NREL identifies over 24,000 man-made water bodies that can generate about 10% of the annual electricity with FPV alone. In the Philippines, they're currently installing three FPV projects totaling 1.2 gigawatts. The National Irrigation Administration of that country has identified 379 hydropower sites to potentially develop FPV. By the end of the year, Taiwan will have the world's largest FPV plant at 181 megawatts. The Taiwanese government bank directly funded its construction. And South Korea, they are currently working on a 2.1 gigawatt 2.1 gigawatt FPV plant at the Saimangu mud flats next to the Yellow Sea. It will be completed by 2025. And that's all I have for you guys. Thank you all for listening. I wish you all luck with making your videos and for finishing up your renewable energy and sustainability research papers and in studying for finals in general. Thank you.